virtual office hour series. My name is Phil Nguyen, and I am the Director of Customer Success here at TechSoup. Joining me today on our panel are Marilyn Demoreas, our account manager on our cloud solutions team, Vanessa Jimenez, customer success manager, Shruti Ramaswamy, our VP of strategy, and presenting today's making sense of your Microsoft cloud licenses conversation is Kevin Mohan, our technical customer success manager. Next slide, please. A few housekeeping items before we start. Please use the chat function to type in your questions and comments. Um, in fact, you can start now by saying hello and write where you're attending this conversation from. For closed captioning, please click on the ellipsis and then turn on live captioning. And then lastly, please note that this session is being recorded. Uh, the recording and slides will be available shortly for everyone who registered for this event. <laughs> Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Kevin Mohal, who, who will be leading this conversation. Thanks, Phil. A pleasant good morning, afternoon, or evening to those joining us today. Again, my name is Kevin Mohal. I'm a technical customer success manager here at TechSoup, and I'll be taking you through today's agenda. First, we're going to briefly discuss what software as a service and Microsoft 365 are. Then we're going to review the basics of the licensing models before addressing a recent policy change regarding donated subscription arrangements. After that, we're going to open the floor to Q&A to field any questions or concerns you may have. We encourage all those who are attending to ping in through the chat with any items that you would like addressed. The goal of this session and all future office hours are to address your needs. So what is software as a service? Software as a service or SaaS is a licensing and delivery model in which applications are facilitated on a subscription basis and centrally hosted by a provider. In the case of 365, we have a combination of Microsoft products and services that allow users to collaborate, communicate, create, and store digital assets on the cloud. Next, let's move on to licensing model basics. The first of the concepts of the 365 subscription model that we want to discuss are the ideas of core versus add-on licenses. Simply put, core licensing is a license type that can be requested without the need of a secondary subscription offer. In other words, it's a standalone product. We'll touch on a couple of examples of core licenses after our next slide. As for add-ons, think of these license types as features rather than fully functional subscriptions. Their purpose is to essentially enhance or unlock the capabilities that are not native to a core subscription offer you may have. Some examples of add-on licenses include audio conferencing for Teams, extra storage capacity for a 365 tenant, and Microsoft E5 compliance. The second concept of the 365 model that benefits our understanding are web-only versus hybrid subscriptions. In the case of a web-only model licensing, the name essentially says it all. These subscription types require access to the internet in order to use the product and do not support offline use. Hybrid licensing, on the other hand, includes both online as well as offline access to many of the applications contained within the subscription through a full desktop version download. So here we have a couple of examples comparing core licenses, the hybrid and web-based models. Here you'll see on this chart 
Microsoft 365 for Business. On the top, you have Microsoft 365 Business Standard, and on the bottom row, Microsoft 365 Business Basic. Business Standard is a hybrid license, whereas Business Basic is web only. Following the row across, we can see several components contained in each subscription, and that the two share many of the same capabilities. One difference of note and the feature that separates the model types is the Microsoft 365 Apps for Business. In plain language, Microsoft 365 Apps for Business is the Office Standard Suite many of you may be familiar with and may have previously downloaded and ran on your computer. These include items such as Outlook for desktop, Excel for desktop, Word, etc. Please note that this is not included in Business Basic, as it again is a web-based only subscription type. That brings us now to a key 365 program policy change that went into effect July 1st of this year. So to summarize what you see here on the slide, you may be wondering what the change is. Simply stated, Microsoft now requires, as of July the 1st, any organization with a donated subscription license type, such as Microsoft 365 Business Basic, 365 Business Premium, Office 365 E1 or E2, to be utilizing their assigned tenant licenses at a rate of 85% during any 90 day period. Understanding this might be a little confusing, I'd like to take a moment to break this down using an example scenario. Say your food bank requested 10 Microsoft Business Premium licenses, and you've assigned all 10 of those to your colleagues. What this means is that nine of your 10 colleagues will need to be interacting online with a component of your 365 subscription. Be it Exchange Online to check your email, Word for the web to create a document, Excel for the web to create or modify a spreadsheet, or any of the other applications accessed through signing in with your user account at office.com once within a 90 day cycle in order to not be affected by this change. Probably also wondering, is there a way that I can keep tabs on this on usage? That's a great question. And I'm going to switch over to my demo tenant to show you how you can pull that report. So from this screen, you'll notice that the, there is a difference in the URL. This will require a certain permission level, such as Global Administrator, to log in at admin.microsoft.com. Once at the home page, you'll click on the Reports tab. From the dropdown, you'll select Usage, Once on this page, you will need to modify the usage report to 90 days, as 30 days is the default. You'll scroll down to the tab that reads Active Users Microsoft 365 Services. You'll click View More. And down here, you'll see the export tab. You'll click on export. And what this will do. Now granted this is running Microsoft Edge, so your downloads may look a little bit different and populate in a slightly different manner. But the goal here is is to access the Office 365 active user detail report. Once 
once you pull this report up in Excel, One second. You'll be able to create a pivot table on the top row by highlighting the headers. and identifying the products that your users have assigned to them. Hey, Kevin, we're actually, we're actually seeing a blank screen right now. OK, let me stop sharing for a second, and then I'll pull up the correct window here. Uh, apologies. OK, you able to see the spreadsheet now? Yes. OK, like excellent. That. OK, so this is what the report will look like. I apologize for that. For those of you that aren't familiar with pivot tables, um, they're actually a, a really cool tool to use on Excel. You see these drop down here. What I did to pull that up was simply highlighting all of the cells where there is a header listed and pressed Control, Shift, and the L button on my Windows running device. From the Assigned Products tab, you'll have the ability to sort by assigned license type. Now, this demo tenant, of course, has hundreds of accounts. If you're only maintaining 10, 15, 20 licenses, this will obviously look a lot smaller. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to sort by the particular license type of the donated offerings that we mentioned and select that. So in this case, we'll, we'll consider EMS to be Office 365 E1 donated licenses. You'll press OK, and that will filter the assigned license types. Once you've identified the users who have been assigned the donated license SKU, what you'll want to do is reference this area right here on the screen. This is the last login instance that was placed against that user's account. From here and from the date, you'll be able to see where the individual user is on that 90 day period. It's important to note that this report is not updated to the last 48 hours. So if you do decide to pull this report, we recommend that you don't wait until you reach the 88th or the 90th day mark in order to ensure that you have the most correct information. For these individual accounts here that have not used their licenses during that 90 day period, you may want to consider deprovisioning that license from that individual so you are not affected by the change. And I'll pick back up here. So that is a review of how to pull a usage report inside your 365 admin portal. I have some additional resources here listed for support. These are all links that we will be providing here momentarily within the chat. As far as virtual office hours, as I mentioned, what we're doing here, we're very excited to announce that we will be doing this on a monthly basis. We, as part of this session, will be presenting a title, but at the end of the day, this is about fielding your questions and your concerns. We want to have the opportunity to hear how things are going with 
your accounts, and in general, how you're doing. So with that, I'm going to move over uh, to the questions and answers portion. All right, um, we have a bunch of questions through chat right now, but right off the bat, um, I want to clarify what Kevin just did on the utilization report. I want to clarify what it means to be uh, to have a donated license versus a purchase license. Um, anyone on the panel want to clarify that? Sure, I, I can. So okay. uh, as mentioned, uh, there are license arrangements that you are able to be granted uh, at no cost. Those are the donated license SKU offers. For the usage of those, it applies to the entire tenant, regardless of what the full arrangement of licenses are. So for your donated license users, you want to make sure that they are interacting with a portion of their account during that time period. And I was wondering, Shruti, yeah. did you have any additional information you'd like to add? Yeah, and I think there's a couple of things that's probably a bit confusing here. So I just wanted to provide a little bit more context and looking at some of the questions as well. So um, the first thing is that this is really only um, applicable for those or those license types, like Kevin mentioned, that are the donated licenses. So those are uh, donated by Microsoft. So those are the E1 licenses. Some people might be on older E2 licenses. Um, there's a Microsoft 365 uh, Business Premium 10 seat license and a Microsoft 365 Business Basic license that are available as donations. And it's really talking about those specific licenses. Um, I think there was a question here about um, there are five licenses per user. Um, each of those licenses are for one user. Um, you can download or use that on up to five devices, but it's only per user. Each license is allocated to one user. That user can use it in multiple places. And um, the reason why Microsoft really put this requirement into place is so that if an organization is not actively using that license, that they can allocate that grant to somebody else and to some of the other organization um, and make that grant more widely available. So right now, um, there are um, many organizations who have these licenses, who's assigned them to a user, but the user's not actually leveraging any of the cloud um, uh, components of it. And so the goal here is just to make sure that you're aware of this as a requirement. Um, Microsoft has been sending out emails um, about this to organizations who might not be utilizing or meeting that utilization requirement. Um, so we wanted to give you the background there and make sure that you understood that they are looking at this and it is something that we encourage everybody to take a look at and make sure that you're only licensing to users who are actually going to be leveraging and using all of the cloud solutions products that are available to them. Um, and it is really just any type of engagement. So if they're using Exchange online, if they're logging in, if they're using their emails actively online, if they're logging into Teams, if they're saving things to SharePoint or OneDrive, that all counts um, towards the utilization. It's really trying to make sure that people who are getting those um, licenses as a donation are actually being able to use it. And if you're not using it, you can deprovision it and, um, you know, come back and request it again. So it's it's not a problem to really request it when you need it, um, but there is kind of a little bit more um, policy regarding if you aren't using it, what Microsoft reserves the right to do, which is potentially um, remove that kind of um, access from that um, donation subscription. Yeah. Hey, Shudi, while we're on this topic, mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me, Wynn Norin just asked a question about the definition of utilization. Mm -hmm. Here, we're saying that utilization, 85% is for assigned licenses. In a previous email from TechSoup, um, it, didn't, it didn't particularly specify the assigned part. Which one is accurate, assigned licenses or total licenses? Just to it's clear. just for the assigned licenses. So there was a really good example in the questions here, which is um, somebody has, uh, Let's see, I think when you had said you had 10 licenses, six of those have been assigned and all of those six have been utilized. 
that's perfect. As long as the six assigned licenses are being utilized, then you're meeting that requirement. It's really looking at, at it um, when they're assigned. Um, Kevin and I were talking about this yesterday and he kind of talked about it as like a, a home or a rental. Like um, once you assign the license, that space is now dedicated to you. So costs are associated with it. Until then it's not, so it's okay. So as soon as you assign the usage, uh, assign a license, the assumption is that you're going to be able to use it. And um, the reporting and things that we showed there, there are a lot of dashboards that you can use in your admin center to look um, at who's using the licenses and who's not. Kevin showed a way that you can download an Excel file and get really granular details. And we're happy to help through that process because obviously it's hard to take all of that in at once. I think the biggest takeaway that we wanted to have in this discussion today was just making sure that you were aware that Microsoft has this policy change and that um, they are making sure that and looking at usage of these licenses as well. Yeah. Um, another thing of note before I go to the, uh, the next question is that this is a community and it is a conversation. So people in the audience, if you uh, want to chime in and answer or, or respond or or um, or add to the question, please feel free. OK, um, let me see. The next question we have. Um, when I think this was answered, but um, we go we can go ahead and ask again. It says when asked, I have a I have seen planner mentioned in a number of M365 training videos, but I haven't been able to find it anywhere. Um, I think it was provided, but um, I think Vanessa, you you answered. Can you uh, answer it here? Yes. Um, so basically, um, Planner is included in a few of the core licenses. Um, you mentioned that you have Business Premium. So the only thing that you need to do is go to office.com. Uh, once you are there, um, log in um, with a user that has assigned a Business Premium license. Um, in the search bar, um, the only thing that you need to do is type Planner, click Enter, and you should be able to see that application right there. OK, thank you. Um, another question we have is I have a feeling that a lot of um, the folks in our attendance here, they're smaller shops. So um, Alice asks, our nonprofit has one license and one person using the Microsoft for Mac. Does this pertain to everyone that purchased Microsoft through TechSoup? Um, I think um, uh this was answered by Marilyn in the chat, but just wanted to note here that this this is not the the policy change is not for the on premises downloaded um, versions of Office Standard or Office Standard for Mac or Office Professional for Mac. These are really looking at the cloud subscriptions. Okay, and I have a question here. This is is the the, the chat is kind of free flowing, so I can't remember at what point in time. But Trish, I'm um, sorry, Tracy Finch asked, how do you deactivate that user license like you just mentioned i'll take this uh yes. so the same portal that i was in uh to from administrative control the admin.microsoft.com uh, global administrator or an individual with the right role permission would would go in through that same platform and can access that from the user tab once you access that in the interface, it's a pretty straightforward process for simply clicking on and um, removing the license uh, from the individual user. Um, that's actually additional information I think that uh, I can, we can potentially put together. Um, and it's one of the resources also, I'm gonna ping into the chat here. Um, for those who are admins on their account, um, it's, it's probably a valuable tool to know where you interact with certain parts of your account. That said, if you do ever have any questions about how something gets done, we have a whole team that is more than happy to take those questions and to walk you through the process also on an individual level. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, and then Shirley asks, each license has five users, right? So are we talking about using the usage of the one license? Yeah, and this is, um, I tried to clarify this before. Um, so each license doesn't have um, five 
license, each license is assigned to a user. A user can use that up to five devices. So, and or this is looking at anything that's assigned, as long as you're using it, you're meeting the requirement, just making sure that the assigned license um, is going to be used in the 90 day period. Okay, and Shuri, just to make sure, you have one user with five devices. In terms of utilization, you could use any device as long as you use any of the apps with any of the devices, it counts towards utilization. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, well, here, here's another good one. And I think, Shuri, this might be good for you. It's from Paul Fisher. Can you talk about upcoming price increases on O365? Sure. Um, I don't know of one right now. So, Paul, maybe you know of something that we might not know of yet. If you know <laughs> of anything, feel free to share it with us. Um, I'm sure we're all kind of keen on um, learning more about that. But as soon as we hear about any price increases, we'll definitely share that as well. I haven't necessarily heard of anything specifically for Office 365 at this time. Uh, real quick, if, if I can, um, yeah, please. I, do know, I do know what he's referencing. Okay. Um, as I understand it now, Paul, from the CSP Yammer community, it's only commercial licenses that are going to be effective as of now. So I've, I've reached out to the administration team there um, through that chat. It's a community CSP chat to try and get some clarification potentially, but Shruti and, and the Microsoft uh, team that they work with um, are very good about being on top of all these things. Okay. Um, okay, here, uh, Kevin, maybe this is more suited for you. This is from Chris. I have M365 Business Premium. I have been unable to register devices. So You're registering we're... devices, I'm assuming, through mobile device management and Intune. I'm assuming is the case. Um, I think you can make that assumption. And if, Chris, yeah. um, if you hear this, if you're, I mean, you can reply to uh, Kevin's question directly on chat. Um, yeah, I, it's Intune is definitely something uh, can follow up with as well. Um, I, as somebody who's personally performed enrollments, um, it's not necessarily the simplest process, um, especially when you work outside of the Windows OS, if you're enrolling Android and creating a work profile or enrolling an APN certificate through Apple Partner Network. Um, so I, that's definitely something where I think there's going to be a longer conversation. So something like that, uh, we, we have uh, contact information. Um, you can feel free to ping in. I'm looking, I'm looking to register desktop, so Windows 10 will update. Okay, yeah, um, if you can, uh, Chris, if you're comfortable pinging in your uh, email, um, I, I've performed Windows 10 device enrollment. Um, and then, of course, you can select the channel, obviously, as well um, for Windows 11, um, and then control whether or not you want to make that update um, at its scheduled time. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I've going to grab that, and uh, I will uh, definitely be in touch with you regarding that. Okay, here's a, another one from Tracy. Can you speak about email functionality with Outlook? We have major problems with the mobile version not having search functionality and not cataloging sent email correctly. I just wanted to chime in. I don't have an answer to this, but I have the same problem. So if anybody <laughs> else has a great solution to this, I'd love to learn. I, <laughs> Searching yeah, on my phone for yeah. emails has been really hard. So if anybody else at any of the other organizations has learned or tricked to this, please feel free to come off mute or, or type in in the um, chat as well. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear about that because um, I think it's a great point because I actually have the same problem as well. It is not just on um, Outlook. I'm having a problem with Gmail, especially on my on my mobile device. The search um, the search function just doesn't seem to work as well on mobile, whatever reason. But like Trudy said, I'd love to hear more from the audience. Yeah, I, I also would too, um, just from my perspective, from a technical one. Uh, I will say this, and I, I don't want it necessarily to be a blanketed statement, but understanding functionality like varies across subscription type and device type. So if something is available, say through Outlook for desktop, it may not be able to scale in Outlook for the web because Outlook for the web runs on an HTML platform that runs through a browsing session 
you couldn't put a six gigabyte application through the web um, effectively. So then carrying over the same thing could be applied to Android OS, iOS. There is slightly different user experiences that you have, um, and it's really just about um, identifying where a function is with availability within that um, device category. And we can definitely help with that because um, it's these things are kind of a learning experience to us. Microsoft likes to roll these things out. I've noticed from occasionally um, as, as far as in beta to like general availability, and it's just about understanding whether or not that function actually even exists. Um, in some cases, it may not. OK, thank you, Kevin. Um, OVM Ed asked a question. I also have M365 Business Premium. Do I have access to bookings? Uh, Marilyn, Vanessa, I don't know if you guys can answer that. Or anybody on the panel confirm? Yeah, I, I can, and, and it is. It is business standard, um, business premium, uh, E3, E5 all include uh, Microsoft bookings, which is an uh, awesome tool, by the way. Uh, and if you're not using it, um, we definitely recommend it. And we're going to have a tech tip video on that uh, down the road um, on how to integrate that, especially within Teams. OK. And yeah. Then, uh... And um, sorry to chime in, but it would be the same way that we explain about how to find planner. So you would have to go to office.com, log in using your um, your credentials with um, a credential that has a, a business premium. Um, and then once you're there, go ahead and then go to the search bar, type bookings, and you should be able to find the application right there. And actually, um, Kevin, do you mind if I share my screen? Because I think a few people had questions on this and we can just show people where to go to get these additional apps. It might be useful. Yeah, absolutely. Go right ahead. OK. Um, and as I'm pulling this up, um, feel, free, feel free to go to the next um, question. The next question. OK. Yeah. Um, so David uh, is asking, is there an admin report I can run to see where licenses issues have not been utilized at all. So quite the opposite, Kevin. Yeah, so that same report that I pulled up, if the, there's a, uh, a column uh, to the left of there uh, that defines uh, values as true or false, if you see a user uh, account or display name, it's also called, if you see false values on that report across all endpoints, that individual has not been assigned a license. You will also see that when you're sorting out the product name column using the pivot table that um, I demonstrated. Um, I think what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll break something down as far as the report itself to kind of better highlight what you'll want to pay attention to. Yeah, and I'll just note that when you go into your admin portal, there's also an option. There's like a usage report or a license report. Um, and you I think you need to like enable the report, which takes about 24 hours. But once you enable the report, some of that reporting will happen directly in your admin portal as well. So you can like filter by um, the users, especially if you have like less than 20. It's actually really easy and to use that. And sorry, I'm um, unable to share just to our team. So if somebody else wants to pull up their office, feel free to. Or um, if I can be made presenter, I can do that. Um, and I yeah, I think I can. I can go ahead. Um, sure. I, I see your tab, but I can't elevate you to a presenter. That's no problem. Yeah, I was just going to show the office um, landing page and just show where all the apps are, so people can just take a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think there was a question I just wanted to call out because it was a very uh, important question um, that Kurt asked about um, the Microsoft 365 Business Premium, since it's a hybrid license, which includes cloud and on-premise licensing. 
Um, and if more than 15% of their assigned users are using only the desktop applications in a 90 day period, does that meet the usage requ requirements? I wanna call this out because it actually does not. It has to be one of the cloud apps. So if an organ is, if any of those users are like only using their desktop and not saving anything to OneDrive or not saving anything to one, um, SharePoint, then it won't count. Um, and so I know we've gotten a lot of questions from people who are saying, I'm using these right now, you know, but um, if they're not doing anything that is registering as cloud activity, Microsoft is not registering that as well. So um, it, right now that doesn't count towards the utilization requirement. Um, I'm going to be able to present on how you can you're able to find those um, those specific apps and other apps that um, Microsoft also has. So um, let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yes, you can see. Perfect. So basically, the thing that you have to do is go ahead and then go to office.com. Are you ready to log in? So you're able to see uh, my picture here. Um, what you can do also is you can use the search bar and then you can literally type bookings and then you can click there in the apps. Um, the other thing that you can do also is go here um, all the way to the bottom. You can go to all apps and good thing about it is that you're going to be able to see all the applications that um, your licenses has. So you go to all apps and you're going to be able to see everything here like forms, which is a great tool all, um, also if you want to create surveys um, for your organization. Um, you also um, are going to be able to find bookings right here um, in planner. Also, it's going to be around here. Um, and if you don't find something um, right here is planner, but the only thing you can do is just go ahead and then use that search bar, which is super um, easy to do. And that's how you find those apps. Um, and I think it, it went a little fast, um, Vanessa. Do you mind just doing that first part yeah. one more time? Yeah, let me let me go back to my screen. Yeah. OK, there you go. So basically you have two points. So be, um, once you are logging into your office dot com, this is where you're going to be. Um, this is where you're going to be in that home page. Um, you have the option to go here in the search bar to type the um, the app that you want to look for, for example, planner. And it's going to be right here. You can click to that to take you to that specific application. Uh, let's try another one. Let's go by bookings. So you can go ahead and then do that. The other thing that you can do is that, um, do you see that bar right here in the left side of the screen? All the way to the bottom, you're going to be able to see this little thing um, that says all apps. So once you are, um, if you want to figure out what other applications your um, licenses has, so you have to click there. It's going to be all the way to the bottom in this left um, bar. It's called all apps. So right here um, you're able to see all the applications that your um, license contains. So you click here in all apps and you can see every single application that you can um, that you can use that is available to you for your subscription. Um, so if you don't find something here, then I will encourage you to use this search bar right here to find the application that you want. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Leslie asks, we have some uh, assigned licenses not being used. How do I handle these? Do I deactivate them? Am I able to reactivate them um, and use at a later time? I have MS365 Business Premium. I can answer that. Um, yes, yeah, so you can actually reduce the number of licenses that you have and for example, if you got the 10 donated licenses and you only need four, you can reduce that number to four or cancel those licenses. And those licenses will still be available at a later time uh, if you need to use them for another user. Okay. Leslie, I actually see you on camera. Did, if that answered your question, go ahead and give a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see you. Okay, great. Uh, okay, Alfred, um, on slide 10, there are links to resources. I need help assigning email, e.g. the email, um, to each of my licenses. Where can I go to get technical help? Um, Kevin, I'll, I'll take this one if that's okay. 
Um, there are a couple of different support uh, avenues. When we send a follow-up uh, email, there is gonna be a link to support. But also, if you're into self-help and posting questions through forums and having community, we have our community, which is included in the link as well. Um, if somebody can grab that link and, and post that in the chat, that'd be great. But there are a couple of different ways um, we could do this. Um, you can call in, ask for help. You can post a question in our community forum. Um, or you can even ask at these monthly sessions. <laughs> um, if we get enough of the same topics, we will cater our themes to the specific topics um, going forward. OK. Um, OK, here's one from uh, from Paul. Um, any idea on nonprofit pricing on Windows 365? We're waiting for it. We don't know yet. We're uh, eager. Um, usually um, how it has worked in the past is that um, nonprofit discounts are usually about 60 to 75 percent off of the commercial pricing. I don't think commercial pricing has yet been released, so that's what we're anticipating, though. OK, um, the next one's from Jerry. We have unassigned licenses. Uh, they affect the 80, do they do they affect the 85 percent parameter how do i handle these do i deactivate them am i able to reactivate them at a later time yeah and i wanted to just note here that like a lot TechSoup does this ourselves we have a few licenses that we have that we keep unassigned so that if somebody comes on we can quickly assign them and things like that so totally understand that again the um usage requirement doesn't come into play until after you've assigned it. So if you have a couple of unassigned licenses, that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. It's when they're assigned and not being used that it is against that kind of policy. Yeah, that's a good point. OK, and then Janine asks, our staff changes frequently, which is very common in the nonprofit space. Um, so I've always kept a few unassigned licenses on standby so that they can be assigned quickly. How will Microsoft's new usage policy affect our ability to keep a couple of extra licenses on hand um, this is premium uh, specifically yeah and, and, that, and that's the um, yep. thing that i just talked about yep yep exactly okay um, this is from kurt uh, to clarify m365 business premium is a hybrid license with web and desktop apps right if more than 15 percent 15 percent of my assigned light assigned users only use the desktop apps in a 90 day period, does that meet the usage requirements? So um, this is the one that I had highlighted before. Um, and so I'll just state it again because I think it's really important and it's kind of uh, a little confusing. But um, it does only count, usage only counts for the cloud usage apps and for the business apps that are online. So if you're only using the desktop application, um, like only using PowerPoint that's downloaded, only using Excel that's downloaded and not leveraging email online or not um, saving these things to the cloud, that might not register. It's, um, I will try to provide, um, I saw there was another question about like what's the apps that count and not. I can try to get that list and put it in here. Um, but the best way for you to understand whether or not your users are actually using this and meeting their requirements is going into your Microsoft 365 admin center and taking a look. Um, it's um, possible that they are you know, engaging in email or doing things that would register as usage. Um, and it, it, does inc it does require it to be cloud usage at this time. Yeah, and um, uh, excuse me if I'm saying this name incorrectly, but Convet. Um, Convet Lee, please confirm if 85% usage is applied to cloud usage only. And I think Shruti just answered that question. Okay. Um, Heather McDonald, we have MS365 Business Premium. I've downloaded the apps I want to use on my desktop and use them regularly there. My usage doesn't reflect that. Will we lose the licenses if we're not active in the cloud? Potentially. Again, I would say definitely go to your admin center, check out the usage, check out what people are doing because email does count there. So it's possible that you're still getting registered as, as usage of the licenses, but it's um, hard to know on, on a you know per license or per org basis until you go into the admin center and check it out. But if you are solely using desktop applications and not at all connected to the internet in that way, um, it is possible that it will not register as cloud usage. Okay, 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm going through the questions here. Um, Wallace Johnson asks, we have Microsoft software purchased and running on our laptops, but for email, we're using Microsoft Office 365 Exchange for email, and we have E1 account. Are we still affected by July 1 requirement? Email counts, so you should be good. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, here's Win Calendar. Would love to hear you talk about setting up a team calendar, being able to see it in Outlook and working with that and a personal calendar. I would really love to open this up to any other of the nonprofits that are here today. Um, there are some ways to open, to use calendar um, and our team might know some of those areas as well. Shared groups, you can do shared calendars, you can create your own mailbox for it. They're not ideal, they're not wonderful. Um, so I don't know if anybody here has figured out a really great way to share calendars across your organization that might be able to kind of share that with us or with Win here, but I'd love to hear how you guys are tackling kind of organization-wide calendars as well. And I don't know if anybody on our team has some better ideas. <laughs> um, I think um, Bookings is a great option too. Like for example, if you want to use, um, I would say like, for example, if you're using um, something to schedule some um, somebody's time, um, I think Bookings is a great option um, to leverage for your organization. Uh, we have done that, we have one that we, personally used to talk to organizations like yours, um, we provide that a specific link and somebody can book sometime in your calendar. I'm not quite sure if that's what you're trying to look for. So I think we would need a little bit more information and what is exactly that you're looking for in that calendar. Is it something that is internally for you to see? Um, I don't know, like um, if somebody is busy and you want to um, book some time with them or is it something externally that you're going to use? For example, um, um, like a food bank, if you want somebody to book at a specific a specific time for them to go to the um, to the food bank at that specific time, you can um, leverage bookings too. Um, the other thing um, that you can do, and Kevin, you can talk a little bit more about it, is using Teams. Uh, Teams calendar is great and is a great tool for you to uh, see um, uh, what your um, peers are kind of doing and then um, and book some time with them also. Yeah, so uh, Paul actually brought up a very good point. Uh, all group calendars and Outlook show a team calendar where you are a member. Without going too far down the rabbit hole uh, with this, um, this is also going to be something that we discuss uh, in part in our next session, um, is there's a hierarchy through which things uh, resources are created within 365 and it works the same with an on-premise environment so creating groups within for example like azure active directory or even groups make it easier uh, within your 365 admin center by defining groups within there um, you know and the users within those groups that group resource extends across the entire platform it extends to teams it extends well obviously it extends to calendar and outlook so it extends to outlook it extends to team which extends to teams which extends to sharepoint so mm -hmm. if man maintaining like uh, resources by groups is very important uh it's definitely something that you're going to want to look at in the admin center uh, and doing when you create the actual users, you can create groups and then assign users to groups. Um, but yes, so just in a nutshell, yes, you want to start at creating a group to extend that control uh, across the entire tenant. Okay, we only have uh, about 10 minutes left and there's some common questions that I'm seeing is that um, if I use SharePoint, if I use Teams, if I use some of these other apps, does it count towards utilization? And the answer is yes. Um, Trudy mentioned earlier that we have a list of apps that do uh, qualify for the utilization rate, but all, all the apps that um, you folks have been mentioning in the chat, they do qualify as utilization. And it's just remember, it's just one time uh, for 90 days and it's a rolling 90 days. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to get to a few more uh, questions before we have to end the session. Uh, another common question is that we are being recorded 
And this recording, as well as the presentation, will go out to um, everyone who has RSVP for this webinar. Um, and, you know, for your viewing pleasure. Another thing is that this is going to be a monthly recurring uh, event. On the third Friday of every single month, we're going to try to, to try to do this for one hour a week. I'm sorry, one hour per session. And, um, and it will be a, a building theme. This week is just making sense of our licenses, right? Kind of getting started. Um, and Kevin, you want to talk about the next session? Really yeah, quickly? just, yeah, sorry. I was just responding to a question um, that we had. So uh, our next session, which will be uh, September 17th, Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, we're going to be going over actually a lot of what we talked about at the end uh, here as far as creating users assigning licenses. We can also, of course, add things like discussion of surrounding groups, group policy, distribution lists, and the last component um, before opening the floor will be role-based access control. You'll hear it called RBAC. If you are in any way, shape, or form, I don't like to throw out technical jargon because I actually don't have a technical background. Um, an accidental techie, I think, is the term. Um, it's uh, it's it's good that you understand like the roles that you can assign, especially I, I would never want someone to take on the whole responsibility of managing a tenant, no matter how big or small it is. So we're going to discuss role based access controls to where you can enable uh, colleagues, you know, teammates on your tenant to control certain things so that you're not doing all the work as well. OK, thank you. Um, so let's try to tackle a couple more questions. The one thing I do want to reiterate is that this is your time. It's called virtual office hours. Bring any and all questions you have. If we don't, if we can't answer it here live, then we will follow up um, with our team of yeah. experts. Here. And I just wanted to plug also, is that because we did this on Teams, if any of you have the Teams application or are using Teams, um, this chat is alive and it's alive with all of us right now. So if you have questions that come up later and you want to ask people, we're all connected now through this team so we can ask each other. Um, and I know that we're all a group of accidental techies, so we can all help each other through this as well. So. Yeah, that's a great point, Shruti. Um, OK, a couple more questions since we have about uh, six or seven minutes. Um, can vet asks, since I only use desktop versions right now, what is my login to office.com? It should be the same login and password that you use to access your email. OK. Yeah, and I will also mention um, a, uh, what type of um, what type of applications do you have if these are coming from an on-prem environment? So basically, um, if you actually got it from TechSoup or another company, uh, to be specifically um, downloadable in your computers, or these are um, cloud licenses. If they are cloud licenses, then like Shruti said, it should be the same login that you have um, when you're logging in, of course, in your applications. And the other thing, how you can find that login is going to admin.microsoft.com, and you're gonna um, you're gonna find out all the users there, and you can find your user right there. Um, and you can also change the password if you don't remember um, the password for that user. Oops, sorry, just talking about mute on. Shruti, you just mentioned this chat function for this particular group. Can you, uh, you, I think you said it kind of fast, can you restate what you just said and how they can access it? Oh. Yes, um, I actually, um, so if you have Teams, um, and you logged in to this with your team or uh, with your Microsoft account. Um, you can go into your Teams instance and in the chat um, tab, you would be able to see this as uh, the title of webinar, making sense of your Microsoft Cloud licenses, and you can continue that chat throughout. So even once this meeting ends, you can still continue to ask questions in there and uh, connect with others. Okay, and then uh, Terry asks. Does using the Outlook app on my phone use the cloud and meet the requirement to access the cloud? So this is a mobile, uh, it's a mobile question. Yeah, um, the answer is probably, but it depends on whether or not you're using um, 
an Exchange server to access it or not, or how it's set up on your mobile phone. Um, if you're using the Outlook app and if you're using Office 365, most likely you're probably using the, the email. But again, if you have specific questions on your own requirement or utilization, I definitely recommend looking at the Admin Center to see. Okay, and then um, Kathleen says she has a long question that she doesn't want to bore us with. Uh, <laughs> anyone, she wants to contact somebody directly. Anyone, um, do we have any suggestions there? Yeah, if you send us your email, um, Kathleen, or put it in there, we'll, we'll be happy to reach out to you. Yeah, we'll have somebody from the team reach out to you directly. Um, uh, what else is there? Uh, for the most part, I think I've I think I grabbed all the questions. This is such a great <laughs> inquisitive group, um, so I think I was able to grab all the questions. If there if there's anything that has been unanswered uh, while we have four minutes left, go ahead and post them here. But I think I grabbed everything. And it would be really helpful. Um, you know, we were hoping that this is something that could be helpful to everybody here. So if you give us a thumbs up or down or something like if this is useful, if you would like these things to be done on a monthly basis, it's really um, helpful to us to understand. We're just trying to make sure that there's a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff in these licenses. So hoping to unpack that and make sure everybody can use them as effectively as possible. Oh, uh, so another thing that I'm seeing is that um, the utilization report. Uh, I know Kevin did a live demo, but it, it was pretty fast. Hold on, Kevin, let me finish. Um, Kevin, maybe we could do something where we can send out uh, detailed directions or even make a quick video. That would be really cool. Yep, I'm going to use an awesome application that um, some of you may not be aware of. Uh, it's called Microsoft Stream uh, to record um, a demo. On, I actually would like to show this report. And just for edification, I'll show you how to access sign-in instances through Azure Active Directory. Sounds like a lot. It's actually even simpler than looking at the report. It just doesn't necessarily make it, it's as much sense as the report does for measuring, but it is still neat to interact with Azure because uh, Azure is a, an amazing tool. So, okay. Um, so as I said, that some more questions uh, poured in. Um, Lake. I have two different agencies who want me to use O365. Um, I think what Lake is really asking for, what are the benefits of O365? If um, somebody can summarize that really quickly. I don't know about quickly, but as far as the benefits of 365, Some benefits, it, yeah. there, uh, you take what on-premise licensing and what you're doing there, and you extend your ability to create, collaborate, communicate, anywhere uh, it's this is not word excel powerpoint you know this is word excel powerpoint access publisher planners stream kazala yammer i mean th there's these licenses will range anywhere from 28 to 41 additional applications so to me if i was going to say well what's you know what makes 365 worth learning it's in the case of donated licenses, as somebody who pays $28 for a personal enterprise one, Paul, that's how I know that they're going up next year. Um, it's the the savings is 75 plus percent. You know, it's you're getting to use this app these applications anywhere at, at any time, whether it's through a desktop download in a hybrid version or through the web. Um, yeah. I really think at the end of the day, the biggest challenge you'll you'll face is just the learning process. It's really yeah. what it comes down to. Um, if we can do one more question, I think Pastor Amanda uh, asked this twice. So how can I find out what kind of E1, E2, E3 licenses I have? Um, I've inherited, Pastor inherited this admin role um, and the license. Yeah. Um, that is something that you can check in your, off, uh, your Office or Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So if you log on, and I think that um, link was posted here before, if you log on to your admin portal, you will be able to see um, all of the licenses. And if you click on the users, you can see exactly what licenses they're assigned to. Yeah. Um, so we're out of time. I want to be respectful of your time. But thank you so much for coming. We This is actually our first office, uh, <laughs> office hour, and I had a great time. <laughs> and hopefully you guys are walking away with um, a lot more knowledge than, uh, than when you came in with. 
look for our follow-up email and look for our invitation for the next session. And, and we'll, we'll research a way how you can just register for the whole series. Um, but please look out for those emails. It'll come from customer success at uh, techsoup.org, which is our organization. Um, all right, and I will follow up with these email, with these questions and um, I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next session. Thank you so much and have a great Friday and weekend. And I want to thank our panelists as well. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thank Bye. Bye. Thanks all.